everyone this is ramalinga prasad kuppa welcome to my channel pharma world today's topic is risk assessment tools the failure mode effect analysis with examples in annex 1 of ichq 9 risk management methods and tools are described in detail there are eight risk management tools and one supporting statistical tool to support the other eight tools in today's video we will try to understand one of the tools fmea is one of the critical tools for risk management let us try to understand the intent of the tool we will address other tools in coming up videos product and process understanding are two important aspects that help on this tool fmea is a product and process centered tool it captures the potential risks of the product and processes so it is very important that the characteristics of the product and processes are understood well product characteristics decide the potential failures in the risk assessment the chemical behavior of the product plays very important role in identifying the associated risks impact of packaging conditions storage conditions of the product also should be considered for the risk assessment processing steps monitoring steps timed events decide the required focus of for risk assessment review of processing steps for each minute possibility for any risk should be discussed the review should include sequence of steps sequence of addition of reactants heating and cooling cycles rate of heating and cooling in process monitoring for critical quality attributes etc this process of review should start at the very beginning of the process and should be continued till the product is packaged for marketing well identified potential risks in the product and process is successful initiation of risk assessment prepare a nice table with the details of process stage number step number serial number potential risk impact on product or process rating as high risk moderate risk or low risk and the mitigation plans etc never miss out any step even if there is no risk we can make a remark that there is no risk in this step mitigation plans are required only when the risk is above the acceptable level acceptable risk or residual risk is unavoidable we will discuss a bit more on the residual risk in the coming up slides after doing all this we are equipped with a wonderful risk identification and mitigation plan let us see a typical example following are the steps for a process let us see how to make a risk assessment 125 kilos of dry raw material is charged into the reactor containing 2000 liters of toluene and heated to dissolve at 50 degrees celsius reflux the reaction mass to get a water content of not more than 0.05% in the reaction mass let us see this example this appears to be a totally anhydrous reaction with a water content of not more than 0.05% on the face of it it does not show any risk but see carefully the reaction conditions are dry anhydrous conditions that means before starting the batch in the reactor it is necessary to look into any possibility of presence of water content in it if the reactor was cleaned with water before the batch is being taken the reaction can fail because the water content should be very low so the focus should be while checking the cleanliness of the reactor free from water content the risk identified should be 
for the presence of excessive water traces in the reactor. The risk of water can be mitigated with a plan to have a final cleaning by an azeotrope of the reactor with toluene. Toluene is the best solvent to remove traces of water from the reactor. If the reactor is connected to the heat exchanger, cooling coils, etc., entire system gets dehydrated. This is the best mitigation plan for this type of reactions. See the depth of knowledge required for addressing this. List out all such minute points of the process with mitigation plans. In this case, the risk rating could be high. Cool the reaction mass to 20 degrees Celsius and charge sodium methoxide powder slowly in several increments and maintain the temperature between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius. See this step, the reaction mass is cooled to 20 degrees Celsius. Sodium methoxide is added to make sure that the reaction mass temperature does not go beyond 25 degrees Celsius. You should know that the sodium methoxide generates heat during exothermic reaction and the temperature of the reaction mass could shoot up to high temperatures. So the focus on risk identification should include the rate of charging of sodium methoxide also. Slow addition will not make the temperature rise abnormally. Also, the jacket of the reactor should have adequate coolant to maintain the temperature below 25 degrees Celsius throughout the reaction time. Here also similar kind of information on how the increments of sodium methoxide should be added and what should be the rate of cooling in the jacket to maintain the temperature within 25 degrees Celsius should be discussed. This also can be classified as high risk. The mitigation plan should be to write stepwise instructions to achieve this goal. Wash the product cake in the centrifuge with 50 liters of hexane as slurry and spin to get dry cake. Here in this step, there is a risk from the highly flammable solvent hexane. While making a slurry, you need a spade to dismantle the cake and make a slurry with hexane. The risk assessment should include the type of spade for the purpose of re-racking the cake. If you use a stainless steel spade, there is a potential risk of electrical charge and generate spark. Hexane being a highly flammable solvent, it can catch fire. The risk assessment should identify this point and as a mitigation plan, a PTFE or PP spade is selected for the purpose and necessary earthing of the centrifuge is required to ensure earthing the electrical charges into the ground. The centrifuge must be effectively earthed to ensure neutralizing the potential charges that could generate in high speed centrifuges. Unload the cake into trays and load into vacuum tray dryer. Continue to dry at not more than 50 degrees Celsius till the wetness of the product is less than 0.01%. The trays should be preferably PP or PTFE for the same reason as described above. The product is dried at low temperature under vacuum as there is a potential risk of the product melting it high temperature. Mill the product to get a particle size of less than 10 microns in a micro pulverizer. If the product is required to be pulverized to a very low particle size of less than 10 microns, the risk from the mill is heat generated during the milling process. Since the mill runs at a very high speed, there is a risk of temperature shooting up abnormally. This could risk the product to melt and loses its characteristics. The mitigation plan is on selection of the right type of pulverizer. The pulverizer should have a provision to have a coolant to keep the mill under control temperature during operation. Pack the pulverizer product into a clear PE bag this, that is polyethylene bag within a bag, black PE bag within a HTPE keg. Some products 
could have a risk of generating static electricity in the packaging polyethylene bags. The mitigation plan should have a provision to use anti-static packaging system for such products. Let us see the concept. So far, the discussion was about the potential failure and its effect on the process and or the product quality. So this tool is based on the potential failure and its impact on the product and or process. Depending upon the extent of risk involved, it is classified as high risk, moderate risk and low risk. Classification is important. The classification totally depends on the understanding of the process and product. Better and comprehensive the understanding, better the classification. So it is necessary to have a team of experts from R&D, production, engineering sections is required for evaluation. Based on the level of risk, the classification is done as high risk, moderate risk or low risk. Sometimes the moderate risk is also referred as medium risk. This is qualitative ranking of the potential risk. The risk classification is done based on the impact on the product and our processes. Since the classification is qualitative, knowledge and understanding takes lead in getting the correct classification. The classification should take into consideration on the severity of the risk, probability of the risk occurrence and detectability. Severity is seriousness of impact on the product or process quality. Probability should be understood that how frequently that could happen. Detectability is an indicator how fast or early the risk could be detected. These aspects also can be captured in qualitative way as high, moderate and low. One important point is that you have to understand that more the severity, more the impact, more the probability, more the risk. But when it comes to detectability, more the detectability, less the risk. It is opposite of the other two risks. Let us see what is FME CA. Conceptually, this tool is similar to FMEA. Difference in this tool is the letter C, which is called a criticality when compared to FMEA. The risk is quantitative. The risk is rated on a scale of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. Either FMEA tool is used or FME CA tool used, the outcome will be same. For some typical examples, please refer my earlier video titled ICHQ9 examples of FMEA and FTA dated about a year ago. Very useful video for you. This is elaborate in terms of measuring the level with a score. More the score, more the impact. For detectability, it is reverse. Please note. Here, the risk is rated on a 1 to 5 scale or 1 to 10 scale. It is similar to a customer rating on any service. More satisfaction, more the rating. Of course, in risk assessment, you should understand that more the rating, higher the risk, with exception to detectability aspect. The mitigation plan is decided based on the product of severity S, probability P and detectability D, that is S into P into D. Multiply S with P and D, you get a score. Then the classification should be done on the total scoring. For example, on a 1 to 5 scale, if the score is 5 for all aspects, the product will be 5 into 5 into 5, which is 125. So the risk is high and maximum. The classification could be done as 1 to 25 for low risk, 
26 to 75 it is moderate risk and between 75 and 125 it is high risk the mitigation plans should be designed accordingly let us see other important points to note product and process knowledge should be comprehensive and the entire risk assessment team should be well aware of the critical points this is very important complete knowledge is a must for getting the best results out of the assessment all the minor and major steps have to be captured even if there is no risk in the step you should never ignore any step whether or not any step has any risk all steps should be covered if there is absolutely no risk the mitigation plan column may be marked with a dash mark there should be consensus among the identified risks and the mitigation plans this is also important that all the team members should have agreement for risk ranking or scoring and subsequent mitigation plans any difference of opinions should be addressed and closed out effectively and satisfactorily if the residual risk is acceptable it can be declared as acceptable risk this should be understood residual risk means there is a risk but may be accepted as such without any mitigation for example if you wear a helmet while driving on a motorcycle you consider the possibility of risk of accident is low and the acceptable even though there is a potential for any accident so the risk cannot be made zero this is easier way to understand the acceptable risk i hope that the examples of fmea and fmeca are understood well you have to make a practice on some live examples of the manufacturing process the guideline ichq9 prescribes fmea can be used to prioritize risks and monitor the effectiveness of control activities fmea can be applied to equipment and facilities and might be used to analyze a manufacturing operation and its effect on the product or process it identifies elements operations within the system that render it vulnerable the output results of fmea can be used as a basis for design or further analysis or to guide resource deployment we will discuss more on other tools on suitable opportunities thanks for watching for more videos please do subscribe like and share thank you